Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So I bought these EverDrive flash carts back in March of this year when they came back in stock. And these are made by a team of people that are based out of the Ukraine and unfortunately due to the war with russia these are getting harder and harder to find because the company had to flee the country and relocate and now thankfully they were able to get their business up and running again and these flashcards are slowly becoming available again and i've sworn by these everdrive flashcards i have one for n64 and one for snes so when the business did pick back up, I ordered a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance flash card. And these run off of a micro SD card that you can put right in the top. And they will go into any retro device that takes Game Boy or Game Boy Advance cartridges, such as the analog pocket. And I picked up these flash cards to specifically use on this device because out of the box the analog pocket really only offers support for cartridges there are a couple of workarounds that you can use to play game boy and game boy color roms on the device and we're going to talk about that in this video but then i also picked up this game boy advance sp with an ips display that's actually really nice and bright and a pleasure to use so i figure in addition to seeing how these flash cards work with the analog pocket we're also going to pop them into this game boy advance and see if this is a worthwhile purchase and i'll also show you how to set up the sd card and all that so that way if you have one of these flash cards or if you're thinking of getting one you'll know what to do all right so let's jump in and let's get started so the first thing you want to do is grab yourself a couple of micro sd cards i picked up a two pack of 64 gigabyte pny cards on amazon prime day you really shouldn't need anything bigger than that considering you're going to barely fill it up with any Game Boy or Game Boy Advance ROMs that you're looking to play. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up this package. We're just going to pick it up and I'm going to use my fingers to... Okay, maybe not. Apparently these PNY micro SD cards come with some really really solid cardboard So let me just take a second go get my trusty scissors and we're gonna make short work of this packaging All right, and there we go now we just need to take these SD cards out and we're gonna plug them into our computer because we need to set up the operating system that the flash carts will run off of. So let's plug these in and do that now. So let's start by going to the manufacturer's website and let's go to the download section and let's pick the flash card that we're working with. In this case, we are going to the EverDrive GB and then we're going to go into the X series because we have an X7 and then we're going to go into OS and then from there, you're going to go to the latest version on the bottom. Go ahead and click that and it will download the appropriate files in a zip folder. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for GBA, except in this case, we're just going to go to OS and then we're going to go down to the latest version and we're going to download that as well. Now let's go ahead and format our first memory card. We're going to use GUI format in order to do this because we need a FAT32 partition. So just make sure that the correct drive letter for the micro SD card is selected. You can name it if you want and then go ahead and click start to do a quick format and commit to erasing and formatting the card. Now let's go ahead and in our downloads folder, let's extract both the GBA OS and the GBC OS and we can extract them to the same folder. Now let's take a look at the Game Boy flash drive firmware first. You'll notice there's a folder called GBC Sys and there's only one file in it, the GBC OS.bin. So we're going to go ahead and move that GBC sys folder to the SD card and then you're also going to make folders for your Game Boy and your Game Boy Color ROMs and you can put them in folders as well right on the root of the SD card. 
So this is what your SD card should look like. You have the GBC Sys folder with the operating system, as well as a GB folder for your Game Boy ROMs and a GBC folder for your Game Boy Color ROMs. Unfortunately, as you already probably know, you're on your own to get the ROM files. But once you have them, this is how your SD card should potentially look. All right, so now we've set up the Game Boy Color flash card. Let's set up the Game Boy Advance flash card. So again, let's plug that one in. Let's open up GUI format and let's format this card to FAT32 as well. So just make sure you have the right drive letter picked. You can name it if you want and go ahead and format this memory card. Now you'll notice something a little bit different with the GBA sys folder and that's the addition of this emulator folder here at the top. And if you look at the readme file in that folder, it actually tells you that the GBA flash card can actually support other systems such as NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket, Master System, and Game Gear. Now this flash card doesn't emulate those systems very well, but let's at least try NES and Game Boy Game Boy Color. And we're going to download them from the link provided in the flash cards documentation. So we're going to download Goomba Color and Pocket Ness. And I'll include a link in the video description since it's not a bunch of ROMs, it's just a couple of emulators and those are okay to link to. And we're going to need only one file out of these two emulator zip files. And those are the .gba files. So if we go ahead and look at the readme again, it actually tells you that we have to not only copy and paste these into the EMU folder, but we also need to rename them to the system in which they're emulating. So for NES, we're going to put one copy of PocketNest and we're going to rename it NES.GBA. And then for Goomba, we are going to put two copies in this EMU folder and we're going to name one GB.GBA and the other one is going to be GBC.GBA. And we're going to do the same thing with this flash cart that we did for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy flash cart. We're going to create folders for Game Boy Advance ROMs, Game Boy Color ROMs, Game Boy ROMs, and NES ROMs. And so ultimately this is what your GBA Mini SD card should look like. Just make sure in your EMU folder you have Goomba in there twice, once as Game Boy, once as Game Boy Color. In the footage, you're only going to see a GBC.GBA. That was because when I was recording the footage, I didn't realize I had to do that twice. But then I realized that Game Boy Color games were working, but regular Game Boy games were not. And then once you've done that, just make sure you have all your ROM files in the appropriate folders, and we should be good to go. So let's eject these SD cards, let's plug them in, and let's see what we're working with. So let's start with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color flash cart first. We're going to put the SD card in and then let's go ahead and put this in the analog pocket and see how it works. And once we hit play cartridge, it's going to just go ahead and fire up and boot right into the OS. And it's very simple. It just has the GBC sys folder, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color folder that we created. And if we go into either ROM folder, our file should be there waiting for us. Now the interface is not great and it's not customizable. It is strictly meant for you to boot up a game and start playing it. But you also get some limited menu options here. You can look up some ROM info. You can add Game Genie or Game Shark cheats if you want to use those. And you can select and start the game, which is what we're going to do. And you could see the Game Boy version of Tetris plays just fine on the flash car and you do get all of the filters and color options that the analog pocket offers. So for me personally, I like the Mint setup because it's very close to the original Game Boy without overwhelmingly being green like pea soup. Now there is a hardware button on top of the flash cart. 
and pressing it will give you a couple of different options. You can save and load your state, or you can go back to the game menu, which is nice to have to do that without having to reset the whole system. So if we go ahead and save our state, we'll play a little bit longer, and then we'll hit that button again, and we'll load the state to see if it actually loads. And you may get some weird beeping noise or some odd sound effect artifacts, but it does have a basic save and load state function. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a Game Boy Color game, and this will display in full color. And with the resolution of the analog pocket, it actually does look very good. Now the Game Boy Color flash cart might not necessarily be a necessary purchase for the analog pocket because for Game Boy and Game Boy Color there is some third party support to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games right off of the SD card in the analog pocket itself. And while it does offer some amazing options such as being able to play the colored versions of Pokemon Red and Blue as well as this color version of Super Mario Land, there are not patches for every single game and there actually isn't a patch to play the original untouched version of Super Mario Land. And if you have an analog pocket and you are looking to get one of these flash drives, I do suggest you take a look at the video I made about how to run these patched files on your analog pocket to see if this technique will suit your needs. However, you're not going to be able to play the original black and white Super Mario Land because it's always going to be this patched colored version. So if you do want to play the original, you'll either need a copy of the original cart or you'll need to get one of these flash carts. However, if you are looking to play on an original Game Boy or Game Boy Color, then you will 100% need one of these EverDrives in order to play any ROMs at all. Alright, so now let's go ahead and check the Game Boy Advance flash cart, and you'll get a very similar OS menu, whereas in this one you can actually try Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and NES games. Now this will boot in the Game Boy Advance's aspect ratio. So on the analog pocket, you are going to get some serious black bars on the top and bottom, and you are also going to get some integer scaling that make Game Boy and Game Boy Color games look just not great. And it may appear that there is some Super Game Boy support in this emulator, and if you hit L and R at the same time, you will access an emulator menu, but none of the settings actually save. So all of the tweaks that I made to try to get rid of the Super Game Boy border and to also try and actually get the Super Game Boy enhanced colors to show up just would not work no matter how hard I tried. Now, I hear that the Analog 1.1 beta may be offering support for Super Game Boy Enhanced games, but I haven't tested that yet. But either way, I would not recommend using a GBA flash card to play Game Boy Color games. Here's another example with Pac-Man Special Color Edition, and you can see on the analog pocket you just have nothing but bezels and black bars. And it makes absolutely zero sense to use this flash cart to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, when you will get much better results just using the GB Studio patches, and you'll get the full screen, and you'll also get the enhanced resolution. However, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that as of this recording, this is the only way to play Game Boy Advance ROMs on an analog pocket is with the GBA flash cart. And for the purposes of playing GBA games, it is an amazing flash cart. And I just want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games, which is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. This game features a bunch of mini platformer puzzles and just has some very simplistic yet very fun puzzle-like gameplay, as well as some phenomenal voice acting by Charles Martinet. So definitely give this game a try if you ever have the opportunity. 
Now we're actually going to do the rest of our testing of the GBA flashcard on an actual Game Boy Advance. So I'm going to put the analog away and take out this modded Game Boy Advance SP. This has an IPS screen and is going to be much brighter than a stock Game Boy Advance SP. Plus we're going to get that very unique BIOS boot up that I love ever so much. And on an actual Game Boy Advance screen, we're not going to have any black bars because we're actually operating with the proper aspect ratio of original hardware. So you can see here, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Dawn of Souls looks very good and is very playable. And if you're actually playing on a Game Boy Advance, you can almost forgive the integer scaling of the Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation because it actually mirrors what a Game Boy Color game would look like on a Game Boy Advance screen. So you are going to have borders on the left, right, and a little bit on the top and bottom. But if you put in the Game Boy and Game Boy Color flashcard into the Game Boy Advance SP, it will trigger the native Game Boy Color emulation and things will look very similar. With the exception being that you can use the R button to stretch out the screen to fit the Game Boy Advance, but who would want to do that? Now let's talk about NES emulation on the GBA flash car, and let's be honest here, it's gonna look squished and not quite right due to the Game Boy Advance's unique aspect ratio. And quite frankly, this is a problem that not even Nintendo was able to fix. Because if we compare this NES ROM to the NES Classics version of Dr. Mario that released for the Game Boy Advance during the system's life cycle, you'll notice that same 4x3 image is being squished down. So if you want to use this flash cart to emulate NES games, this is something that you're going to unfortunately just have to deal with. Just to give another example, here is the NES version of Super Mario Brothers done through the emulator and you can see everything looks pretty squished. And here is the NES Classics Edition that actually released for the Game Boy Advanced and you have the same aspect ratio issues. So ultimately, what are these devices for? And I would say the only way you would benefit from getting one of these flash carts is if you want to play ROMs on official hardware. If you're looking to play ROMs on a system like the Analog Pocket, you can see there are better software options available to you, and there are better software options coming in the future, quite possibly as soon as next video. However, if you want to play on original hardware, these are pretty versatile in what they can do, but they are also very limited in what they can do. They are meant to serve a specific purpose and they don't deviate from that purpose. However, they are very well built and they seem to be able to last you the life of whatever retro system you are planning on using these flash carts on. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or thoughts on these flashcards, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And feel free to continue the conversation in the Budget Aquaman Discord. Link is in the video description. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now. And don't stop believing.